For this little tutorial here, I've got a little minimal API project with the following. We've got a game character model with an ID, a name and a location. Also the corresponding game character DTO, which is a record struct with an ID and a name for now, but we will change that in a minute. Then we also got the location here as a relationship. Let's say the game character has a location also with a name and with a description and then also the location DTO. And now for the program CS, the only thing we've got here is, well, that's really just the default application here when you start creating a .NET Web API with .NET 7 and a minimal API. In that case, I just removed the weather forecast stuff here. So we've got mock game characters, Ellie living in Jackson and Joel living in Boston. If you know what I'm talking about here, I know this might not be correct at the same time, but let's just ignore this fact for now. We've got this example and we've got one endpoint, just the game characters returning the game characters. And please note here, we will actually return the entities, the models and not the DTOs. So let's test that real quick. Here we are in Swagger. This is our endpoint. We hit try it out and execute and beautiful. We get everything nice, right? But now we want to use our DTOs. And of course, we don't want to map this manually. So you probably already know auto mapper, but now I mean, you read the title. I want to use map stuff for that because this is the new rising star in regards to automatic mapping in .NET. For that, we just right click our project file and install a new NuGet package. Make sure to be on the browse tab. I always make this mistake. I'm on the install tab. This won't work. Just hit Mapster and there it is already. Already 12.5 million downloads. A fast, fun and stimulating object to object mapper, kind of like auto mapper, just simpler and way, way faster. This sounds great to me. So let's try that. We accept and maybe it's already up there uh, installed. And now the thing is, if you know auto mapper, you know that you probably have to add a profile, some kind of configuration, right? But now we just try the following. We enter period and then try to use this method here. It is from Mapster. So with control period, we can uh, see our quick, fi quick fix menu here with a suggestion to add the reference using Mapster up here. Maybe you want to put this into a global usings file, something like that. And what we want to have here is not one game character object, right? So we could use if it's only one game character, then we could do the following and just say now this object here is our source. Maybe this is just one game character and we just want to map it, adapt it to one game character DTO. But in this case now we can also do the following. So no link needed here, anything like that and just say adapt this to a list of a game character DTOs. We save this and restart the application manually. There we are. We see now it only returns game character DTOs and we hit try it out, execute. And there we are. We have Ellie and Joel. Isn't that nice? This is everything you have to do. Now the thing is maybe you want to use some complex mapping. So let's say we just change our DTO here and we will come to the location in a minute. Now let's say this is the full name and in our game character, it's called name. So what is happening now? Restart the application. And here we already see this is the full name. Try it out, hit execute. Full name is null. Of course, we can change or fix that real quick. We have to fix it because the properties do not have the same name. So we will just add a little function. So for instance, this, let's just call this configure Mapster. And again, this is only necessary because we kind of messed up the, the property names maybe. And now what we can do here is we just write type adapter and then config and then for mapping the game character to the game character DTO, we say we have a new config. All right. And then we say map and then for our destination, we say 
full name full name for that the source is the source name and that's it it's really not much and we call the function let's say up here so configure mapster that's it the warning is gone restart the application and there we are and now let's see it execute and now it works isn't that great all right so this works and now the next step is let's add the location all right so again we have our location model here the entity let's say and also the location dto and now in our game character dto we also want to return the location as a location dto all right so we call this property now properly location this time but it is a location DTO and not a location as here, right? So let's save that, restart, and let's already have a look. There we are, returning a game character DTO and a location DTO. And there we see the nested object. And we try this out, hit execute, and it already works. Isn't that great? Because the properties are the same out of the box, no config necessary. But again, if you want to configure this, for instance, you want to set the name of the, the location uh, to upper case, for instance, you can do that as well. So let's do that real quick. Back to our program CS, you pretty much can copy this line here or these two lines. And now this time you want to move uh, or we want to map the location to the location DTO for that scenario. We wanna add a new config. And now regarding the name, we just wanna say, this is now the name to upper. We save that, we restart the application, try that out, hit execute, and that's it. Isn't that great? This is how Mapster works. The complete code is available on GitHub. Just check out the video description below. And please, if you like this video, I would really appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and maybe you wanna check out the video here on the screen. Thanks for watching, take care.